ever since Russia has introduced its new KH-47M2 Kinjal hypersonic missile in March 2022. The USA has been deemed second in the hypersonic arms race against Russia. The United States Air Force has responded to those speculations by successfully testing new scramjet-powered hypersonic missiles. Join us as we break down how the hypersonic arms race has shaped up in recent months and the effect the introduction of this new US hypersonic missile will have on it. Here is our take on the whole situation. In March 2022, Russia's Ministry of Defense used the Russian Kinzhal hypersonic missiles to strike a weapons depot in Ukraine's western ivano frankivsk region. This new advancement for the Russians placed all eyes back on the U.S. Air Force looking for America's reply. According to the Pentagon, there are six fields of technology that can prove to be crucial in a potential conflict between the two nations. One of those six fields is hypersonic weapons. And for the first time since the beginning of the Cold War, the USA was trailing in the race in the field of hypersonic weapons weapons. It may come as a bit of a surprise that the U.S. defense, which has an annual budget of over $700 billion, was being outperformed by Russia's $61 billion a year defense. But for a while there, Russia had two serving hypersonic missiles to the USA zero. Don't get us wrong, the USA led this very race in the 90s, so they do possess some skills in this field. But once the Cold War ended, the Russians quietly went about their business and their research. The Americans, however, had their hands full with some conflicts in the Middle East. This forced them to focus on other, less expensive weapons so they could mass deploy them in the field of battle. In fairness, we got to see some inspirational weapons because of that shift in focus, but the USA's hypersonic advancement definitely took a hit. From another, more pro-US standpoint, it took the rest of the world two decades to catch up and overtake the USA in weapon advancement, and that too in only one of the many major fields. There was no doubt that it would only take the USA a bit of time to retake the lead in the hypersonic field. But, as some experts pointed out, they may not have been trailing at all. This is a bit complicated, but the argument they made was related to what qualified a missile to be considered an operational missile. For Russia, it essentially means something that works and can be deployed. For example, the Russian stealth fighter, the Su-57, is the only one of its kind. There are a dozen prototypes, but the real thing is only one. And Russia counts it to be an operational service. In the American military, though, the label is much more coveted and is only awarded after a long checklist is completed. But as the media portrays it, the USA has quite a lot of work to do. According to media documentaries, achieving the speeds a hypersonic weapon reaches is portrayed as a huge task. But if you really think about it, the Americans have already crossed the hypersonic mark. For those of you who don't know, a missile or a vehicle is deemed hypersonic once it registers a speed of one mile per second. So, does anything come to mind when we say one mile per second? First and foremost, the space shuttle. This thing reaches way more than the 3,600 miles per hour mark. It actually hits 17,500 miles per hour during re-entry. On top of that, the Americans have the X-37B, which can also cross that mark. So, individual business owners like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos also have vehicles that can cross the 3,600 miles an hour mark. Hopefully, they will just stick to the rockets and won't ever own any hypersonic missiles. Another point many experts made was about how Russians aren't really that far out of sight. For a while there, the Russians had two different operational hypersonic weapons serving in their military, whereas the USA had none. It later transpired that those claims were not completely correct. It seems that Russia's Kinzhal, despite reaching the required speed to be called a hypersonic weapon, is not one of the advanced new weapons the term is associated with now. Apart from the speed, a hypersonic weapon is meant to be in control of its hypersonic speed so that it can use it to achieve a task that would be impossible for other missiles. Russia's Kinzhal is not one such missile. If we were to disregard the Kinzhal as a hypersonic weapon, it would change the picture dramatically. This Russian missile was the basis of many arguments about whether the USA is losing the hypersonic development race against Russia or not. The KH-47M2 Kinzhal is dangerously similar to another missile that was in operational service in 2006. The 9K-720 Iskander was under development in 1988, but saw its first flight test in 1998. Ten long years of development were overcome by delays due to the demise of the Soviet Union. No doubt, the two missiles can cross the one mile per second speeds, but they are nowhere near as advanced as some other missiles which have cutting edge technology. In fact, these missiles are so outdated that they are pretty similar to the US Navy's retired AIM-54 Phoenix missiles NASA used for hypersonic flight testing. Another opinion of some experts is that the reason Russia labels their weapons with such impressive words and puts them into these categories is that they want to sell their weapons. If anyone knows that the Kinzhal is not a hypersonic missile, 
it is the Russians. The advantage they hold is that it is only them who knows. There can be speculation and opinions, but no one else knows for sure. What is more important is how the USA has nothing to show for itself. This sends all buyers Russia's way, and the Russians can sell them their missiles because there's nothing else on the market. Recent developments, therefore, must not have gone down very well with the Russians, because the market for hypersonic weapons has been blown wide open. For a while there, the US had been trying to compete with Russians, but kept facing issues and kept failing tests. Perhaps even the Russians knew that these woes would soon end for the US, and that they would lose their monopoly in the hypersonic weapons market. It wasn't as easy as it may seem, though, and the Ministry of Defense was annoyed by the repetitive failures, to say the least. For the last three years, the budget allocated to the hypersonic research field increased from $2 billion to over $3.5 billion, which shows how urgently the USA wanted to be the front-runner in hypersonic weapons sales. This new successful test was carried out in secret by the U.S. Air Force, but we have it on good authority that it happened. The test was of the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept, aka HAWK. Now that is a good abbreviation. It ticks all the boxes to be considered a proper hypersonic missile, and is scramjet-powered. That is also an important feature since no country has ever fielded a scramjet-powered operational weapon or vehicle. This missile was a product of the hard work of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, and the Air Force Force Research Lab, AFRL. The attention this issue had is apparent by the fact that two departments were made to work together to beat the opponents in this race. There's still room for Russia and close ally China to be happy with their progress. There are two types of hypersonic weapons, hypersonic boost glide vehicles and scramjet-powered cruise missiles. And it seems the USA is working in this scramjet field. This leaves the hypersonic boost glide vehicles market wide open for the taking. All the Russians and the Chinese need to do is continue selling their product while also working on their research to improve the missiles they have. Hypersonic cruise missiles are very different from boost glide weapons, meaning there will be a market for both types. The US wouldn't want their enemies to be in control of any weapons market in the world, let alone one they are so advanced in. The scramjet-powered field is pretty much done and dusted, though. No nation in the world has managed to work out a way to field a hypersonic cruise missile on a scramjet. Whether the Russians and the Chinese would try and compete with the Americans or let them have half the market of hypersonic weapons remains to be seen. And that was it for today's video, ladies and gents. Take care out there, and we will see you at the next one.